Hi guys, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new weekly reading vlog for you guys. So this week's weekly reading vlog is going to be focusing on my arcs that come out on October 6th. I have four of them and I'm currently only like 20% into one of them and it is the 20th of September. So let's see how this goes. The four books are going to be Five Perfect Strangers by Natalie D. Richard, Hush by Dylan Farrow, Mistletoe and Mr. Right by Sarah Morgenthaler, and Blazeworth Games by Amparo Ortiz. This is the one I'm 20% into. My, I'm about to run out of space on my camera, so I'm gonna update you guys a bit more on this later, but I wanted to let you guys know that I, I am enjoying it, but it's weird because it's very modern and very contemporary, considering that it's a fantasy. It's like a contemporary fantasy with dragons, but in the real world. It's kind of strange, so. I don't know, I'm still getting used to it. It's definitely not anything that has me totally enthralled yet, but it's definitely one of the better dragon books I've read in a little while. Time for me to explain what this book's about. So, uh, like I said, I'm like 22% in, so not very far considering that I've been reading it for like two days now, but it's fine. So following Lana, her dad's Puerto Rican, her mum is white, and her mum and dad are divorced. Well, that doesn't say they're officially divorced, but they're separated. And the mum moved Lana to Florida after there was like a kind of dragon attack. So this is like a very modern contemporary world, kind of like futuristic almost. There are witches in this world, um, there are dragons, and um, like there are like these really cool like telecommunication devices, but there are times where they'll talk about like really modern things, you know, like K-pop is mentioned in here, which it's kind of strange considering that this is kind of fantasy-esque but modern. It's, it's kind of hard to like put this into a box because it seems to be going out of so many different ways. Lana grew up watching the Blaze Wrath games on TV with her dad and the Blaze Wrath games occur every year. They're on the same scale as like the Olympics kind of and it's a dragon race so you have six people who are bonded with dragons and then a runner. And so each person has their own respective role in the game and what they're supposed to do to it and once a goal is scored, the runner for that team can then make it up the mountain and it's like apparently really difficult and like dragons attack you, blah, blah, blah. Lana wants to be a runner for the Puerto Rican team. The book starts off with her wanting to go to these tryouts for the Blaze Wrath games to be on the Puerto Rican team, but she has to do it without her mum's knowledge because her mum is completely terrified of dragons. Her dad works in Puerto Rico at like a dragon sanctuary. He tries to help them be because if a dragon isn't bonded to a human, if they're unbonded, they can be very dangerous because they're just not stabilized in a sense. And there are all different kinds of dragons and most dragons are like native to like a specific country. Yeah, so Lana's mum doesn't want her trying out, but what happens is on the day that Lana's supposed to go try out, there's this explosion at a wand shop that they're at. Lana ends up seeing this missing dragon rider from the Blaze Wrath games and he went missing like two years ago and it turns out that he's kind of gone rogue, like he's gone with the evil people because years ago there was this dragon who went evil and his rider ended up expending all of his power to turn the dragon into a human. And so now this dragon is like stuck in a human body and he's kind of studying a whole rebellion against the dragon, like the Blaze Wrath games and dragons being kept up in captivity and he wants dragons to kind of rule the world again and be free, which, which is nice to have them be free, but he's kind of being evil about it at the same time. So now this ex rider has teamed up with him and, and the whole thing is like they'll stop if they cancel the Blaze Wrath games and if they let all the dragons free, but like the people who own this won't do that. and. Lana's just really confused because she feels like maybe she wasn't brought onto the team for the right reasons. Like maybe there's more to the story than she realizes. At the moment, I'm just kind of starting to get to know how the Blaze Wrath games is working and kind of how Lana's role is. Um, I've met her teammates so far on Team Puerto Rico, but I'm enjoying it. It's definitely an interesting world. It's just, it's kind of strange at the same time. So it's taking me a little bit of time to get used to it, but yeah. So I'll keep you guys updated. This is Own Voices. Um, Amparo Ortiz is Puerto Rican and is from Puerto Rico. So that's a positive. So yeah, I'll keep you guys updated unless you know how it goes. And yes, bye. Hey, so it is the next day and, well, yeah, a little bit, it's technically one in the morning, so take that as you will. Um, I am almost done with Blaze Wrath Games, as you guys can see, I have less than a hundred pages to go. I um, did actually a really good job reading this last night, I'm quite surprised at myself. I was on page 80 and now I'm on page 284, so I knocked this out now since I just finished editing and now my video is just exporting. 
But I um, just want to give you guys a little bit of an update of where I'm standing with this book. So I do really enjoy it. Depending on how this ending goes will determine if it's going to be a three or a four star read. It's definitely not a five star read just because it isn't, but I am really enjoying it. It's a standalone. I do love the idea of the dragon lore in this. So I think the author did a great job, you know, expanding upon the MC, but when it comes to the side characters, I feel like there could have been a little bit more depth to them. You know, we'll see kind of how this ends and exactly what the end deal is. I think that this was very smart, the way that it was written. I think the lore was very well thought out. This is definitely a world that I'm very interested in. I do think that there are aspects of this world that weren't fleshed out enough, especially the witch aspect of it. I feel like it's in there but we haven't really delved that much into it mostly because our character isn't a witch and because her best friend who is a witch she's not with for like a majority of the book so you don't really get that kind of insight. I think what's really amazing is what Lana is going through in this with being Puerto Rican but you know she hasn't been back to Puerto Rican in 12 years and now she's on the Puerto Rican team and she kind of feels like she's a fake like she doesn't really belong there because she thinks that, you know, she doesn't really deserve this spot on the team because she was kind of handpicked and she doesn't really know why she was handpicked. Mm -hmm. And then there's the fact that she feels like, well, she's one of her teammates said, you know, you're the one who has to carry our flag, but you haven't even stepped forward in our soil in 12 years. And it's not like you, it was a choice. It was a conscious choice that you made not to come back to Puerto Rico, you know, to not explore that part of your like roots. And so I do think that's a big part of this um, that I really do enjoy. So yeah, and also like I thought, um, romance is, not a big part of this at all. It is a lot of just queer undertones that are going on, but it's definitely focusing on the story as more of like a plot. Also, I just realized I know that these are, I know which ones these are. These are the, um, Sol de Noche, but I don't know which one this one is. Like, is this Violet 43? I don't know. If you guys have read this and you know which dragon this one is, well, let me know. Ah, uh, and that's it. Bye! finish this, I decided to give it four out of five stars because I really like the ending. I really like the overall message of everything that happened. There were a lot of really smart choices that were made in how all the characters ended up and kind of the extent to all the consequences and how this world works. So I would be really intrigued to see if there would be like a sequel to this, like a companion because there definitely is a lot of potential in this for that to happen. And then I just started Hush by Dylan Farrow. This, is this a novel? But it says on uh, Goodreads, when I went to go be a little, oh, I'm reading this, it said Hush number one. So maybe this is gonna be like a duology or something. Basically, this is set in a world where the only magic that there is is called the telling and it's through bards. So. People in this world, like, what you say has an impact. Like, your words are very powerful and it's kind of like the idea of, like, manifestation almost. Like, you can't say, like, dangerous things or bad things because that could then cause them to happen. Years and years ago, there was this illness, this plague that spread throughout and it started off with people's veins going, like, a deep, deep indigo colour and then in the second stages of it, their, like the tips of their fingers, like all the extremities would go deep indigo and then the people would start to go mad and crazy and very sick and it was called the blot and they found out that it came from ink. I don't know, I'm only like 20 pages in so that's just what I've learned so far. And so we're following Shay and her younger brother actually died from the blot and so people don't really want to interact with her family, like her and her mum anymore because of that. She feels like she's been cursed by the blot because she does embroidery and whatever she embroiders kind of comes true and it's only been like minor things like she'll embroider a hair and then a crow came and gave her a dead hair and then she embroidered like a bunch of birds in a formation and then she looked up and there was this bunch of birds in a formation so they're like kind of kind of strange that's kind of the situation and at the moment she wants to, she's terrified of the bards, but she's hoping that they can help her with what's going on. And from what I know, the synopsis of this, her mum ends up getting murdered by a bard. And that's when she then goes to, I forget what the, it's like the grand house or something. And that's like the place where all the bards like learn their magic. I don't know, I'm interested to see this keeps on going. Also, I don't know if you guys like could see, but how cute are these like little earrings that I'm wearing? These um, cherries, I love them. <laughs> that's all for now. Bye-bye. Tis I who hath returneth. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, why am I so strange? Okay, hang on. Yeah, September 23rd. I did some reading today because it was actually quite nice weather out. I only got 67 pages in, which is not very far, but you know. So I just got to the part where, you know, like I said, on the synopsis, it says that her mum is killed with a silver dagger and that dagger has to do with the bards. And so that just happened. Did I say silver dagger? It's a golden dagger. Um, but that just happened. So that's where I'm at. And she's kind of, you know, really freaking out about this. There is a love interest at the moment that I think is just going to disappear once she actually leaves the town. But his name is Maddox, but he goes by Mads. And it's really, really weird to read because, like, that's one of my nicknames. And so to read a male love interest that's called Mads, I'm like, <laughs> my brain is not functioning with it. Um, I'm excited to see kind of how this keeps on going. I have a feeling that she has the telling or something she's like got some sort of magical power it's just kind of the inkling that i've gathered throughout this so i'm interested to see how that's going to go we did meet a bard in the beginning there was like three bars came to their town and one of them was like a very attractive dude so i feel like he's maybe going to be her love interest in this yeah um i'm going tomorrow to go get my nails done i get them done every three to four weeks it's been four weeks so this is what they currently look like and then i'll come tomorrow and show you what i do get done um, but yeah, so I'll keep you guys updated and let you know. And that's it. I'm a go. Goodbye. <laughs> let me show you my nails quick and then I've got, you know, work to do because that's my life at the moment. But we kind of went for like a Shigo slash uh, Halloween-y spooktober vibes because next week is October. And so I figured why not get into the mood a week early. So... I'll have these for the next three weeks. I'm excited to see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, goodbye. <laughs> I'm currently 50% through, hush. Well, I'm actually a bit over 50%. It's just, oh my God. So I was like 80 pages in the other day and then hadn't read it since because you know, life. And I'm like 200 and something pages in, 220. And it is so amazing. Like, I love this book so much. Her being at High House right now, like, training to become a bard is just, it's so interesting. And there is, like, you know, the the head person, like, the, the lord of, like, the whole bard place. He's really interesting because, like, one person told her, the guy who mentioned at the very beginning that looks kind of hot, he told her to be careful of him. But, like, he's being the nicest person to her, this lord. And so she's like opening up to him and I think it's really sweet, but I'm, I'm kind of getting like, I don't know what book I'm getting, like this kind of vibe is also similar to, but you know those books where the person ends up getting taken in by like this very powerful figure and then it turns out this powerful figure is actually like evil. I feel like that's what's going to happen here. Like she's trusting this guy, but he's just going to use her. But yeah, anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to come on here to say was just the fact that I'm really loving this and you guys should definitely look into it if you like fantasies like this is a really solid YA fantasy and so yeah I'll catch you guys up I'm just gonna keep on reading bye, -bye. hey so it's like two in the morning I have a massive headache and I'm super tired but I had to finish this <laughs> ow oh my god I had to finish this book which I did it's all done it's all finished I loved it I decided to give it a 5 out of 5 stars, which I don't think is going to surprise anyone after my last update for you guys. It is, I said, the first in a duology, and it's just, it's so amazingly written, and, you know, there were just a lot of parts in it that just kept you guessing, and that you weren't really sure what was happening, because a whole part of this storyline, a whole part of this book, is this whole idea of what is true. And what really is, like, what is reality? Because um, people can descend into madness from, the, from, like, trying to learn their telling if you don't master it correctly. And so a big part of it is that, you know, female bards tend to succumb to the madness a lot easier. And, you know, if you have the blot, you know, you might succumb to the madness. And so throughout this entire book, Shay is constantly worried if she's going mad, if she's cursed. And so you kind of alongside her wondering and like is what she's seeing is what she's thinking is everything re are these things real are these things just like illusions like what is really happening and it's just really interesting to see how everything unfolded especially towards the end highly highly recommend this one 
it was amazing and I'm so glad that they sent it to me. And then I'm gonna go to bed. I've got some work to do tomorrow, but then I'm gonna start five total strangers, I think. Yeah, I'm just like looking at my shelves. <laughs> okay, that's all for now. I'll catch you guys up tomorrow. Goodbye. Hey, it's the next day. I am, I've just been reading for like, I think, I don't even know how long now, like an hour. I am currently 25% of the way through Five Total Strangers by Natalie D. Richards. So we're following Mira and she is eight, well she's turning 18. She's a senior in high school. She goes to this like really expensive art high school that is out in San Diego where her dad lives because her mom and dad are divorced. She's trying to get back to Pittsburgh for Christmas because last Christmas her aunt, who is her mom's twin, passed away. So she really wants to get back there to, you know, be a support system to her mom. The only problem is that when her flight lands, she's supposed to have a layover for 45 minutes and then catch a flight to Pittsburgh. A blizzard has come through. They call it a blizzard hurricane, which is like a blizzard slash a hurricane is coming through. And so you see that there's this girl that she was sitting next to on the plane that they had like a whole conversation. This girl is like, hey, look, I'm hiring a car and you know if you want to come with I can drop you off on the way and then Mira ends up saying yes after you know she finds out you know I need to get back and then she gets in this car and she's with this girl Harper and um, three other people two guys and a girl and initially she thinks that they all know each other but you kind of catch on pretty quickly that they don't actually all know each other and it's like a weird situation and you wouldn't think much of it except for the fact that we did have a like a little page where there was this letter that was written and it's addressed to Mira and it's from someone who writes it sincerely yours and it's someone who met her a year ago when her aunt was sick in the hospital and is like kind of obsessed with her. I'm not sure which person it is yet, but we'll see. But yeah, I'll keep you guys updated as I keep on reading it. And yes, goodbye. I'm 67% of the way through the book. That's why I've come on here to inform you. Um, a lot more has happened and I'm really not sure where this story is going at all. Um, I just did my Goodreads update for it and I was like, I literally have no idea what is happening. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued to see how this is gonna end because at this point it's just strange. Come do that. Good girl. Okay. I'm gonna go back to reading and I'll catch you guys up when I have finished the book and then I'll let you know <laughs> what's going on with it because at this point, I DK. Okay. Bye. Okay, so I just finish the book so I'm putting it back on my arc shelf so I can grab the other one that I'm reading next down but um I think I'm like giving it mm, three stars maybe I don't really know it was like it was fine I think that like the end was definitely anticlimactic it just it got kind of obvious like it got to the point where I was like oh I feel so dumb I should have definitely seen who like the person was coming. I definitely read better YA thrillers before with a lot more depth to them, especially to the characters. And like, I know this is an arc, but just the way that it was written, like for it to have gone into this stage of being published as an arc, like I feel like there definitely should have been some more editorial decisions made. Um, I don't know if maybe I'm just getting picky because I'm taking classes in this now. And so like, I'm becoming, what? But I feel like it's stuff I would have realized, like, you know, anyway, just easily. Not every book's gonna be a hit. Okay, so so far, actually, let's do my rankings. We have Hush, Blaze Worth Games, Five Fiddle Strangers. I even almost forgot the book's name. I literally just read it. And now we're reading one of my most anticipated Mistletoe Mr. Right by Sarah Mogandala! So this is set in the fictional town of Moose Springs, Alaska. It is a town where there, it, it's got like, you know, it's regular, you know, town population that are there all year. But then there's this massive resort that people go to, um, you know, because they are hoity-toity and extremely rich people. And the townspeople of Moose Springs hate when the tourists come because the tourists just suck. And in book one, we follow this girl and she comes to visit her friend Lana because um, her friend Lana constantly goes down to the resort there and she ends up going to this place called the Tourist Trap, which is like this world-renowned, not world-renowned, but it's like this renowned diner that they have in town. And it's hilarious because the guy who owns it, A, 
he called it the tourist trap for shits and giggles because he didn't think that anyone was going to come to it. And he has like a, such a give no shit attitude. He's like, he has his menu. He doesn't let you actually pick what you want at the menu. He just gives you what he wants that day. There's like four things on the menu and he's the only person who works there. He ends up kind of striking up a conversation with this new girl and it's kind of their romance and I absolutely love it. So I gave that one a five out of five stars. Like I speed, I think I read that one in a day. So I'm not going to be surprised if I end up like, you know, speed ring this tomorrow because that's, that just wouldn't surprise me. Um, it's like two in the morning. Okay. Good night, night. Okay, I'm back already because, <laughs> and curiosity, I was like, oh, I wonder what the first sentence is of this. <laughs> and I opened it up and I read the first sentence and it's, <clears throat> hang on, let me, I have to censor myself actually because I don't want to say the word. Someone had drawn a giant man's part in the snow. <laughs> At least it's anatomically correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. I'm so excited to read this book, guys. You have no idea. Okay. For real now. Good night. <laughs>
same. I'm so disturbed. Like, I will never look at squirrels the same way ever again. She did a great job. I'm literally loving this. If it wasn't for that it was two in the morning, I'd keep finishing it. I'm a little bit annoyed because so I was editing today and I got my video done that's going up tomorrow, but I was going through and was like, oh, pre-edit, so I have something to go up on Friday. And I was looking back at the clip and I absolutely just like hate it. So I wasn't planning on it, but now I have to spend time tomorrow refilming. So it's just a pain and I hate when I have to do that. So yeah, I have no idea how long this vlog has gone on for. Has it been like a week? I literally don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so no reading update for you guys. I just filmed some videos today, had a group project meeting, did other stuff. Very busy day. I'm exhausted. But, um, oh god, I'm also oily. Uh, since there's no reading update, the reason why I'm on here is because, as I have said, I am moving again <laughs> tomorrow and on Saturday. So I need to repack up all these shelves again and everything that I brought here. So I'm just gonna film a little montage of me like taking down my shelves and packing and stuff because, you know, I think it's fun to watch. So I hope you guys find it fun too. But I've literally <laughs> finished all my filming and everything and then sat in bed and was like, mm -hmm, I don't wanna do this, but I have to. So my goal also tonight, since I'm like 63% of the way through Mistletoe Mr. Right, is to finish it because it is the 29th. Tomorrow's the 30th. I need to finish this book before the end of this month, okay? So that is my plan. Well, let's see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> I know that you're afraid It feels like every day Things are slipping away You're slipping away And you think back to a time That you were lost Thoughts are so good now Skin seem to dry your eyes And chaos is collapsing from your mind And you say that you're fine But now you're out of up all the packing I feel like no way for me to sit here we go okay so I'm just finishing up packing but um today is it Friday the 2nd of October so I did finish mistletoe and Mr. Right last night of course I get five out of five stars are we shocked no and if you are well you shouldn't be so oh my god what a fun but seriously long reading vlog I feel like this has gone on for like two weeks now which was not my intended you know, result, but it's fine. It might be a bit of a pain to edit next week because I probably have a lot of footage, <laughs> but I'll, I'll make do with that. Um, yeah, so it was just as good as the first book, if not better, because I feel like I connected a lot more to Lana as a character. Also with the way that it ended, it leaves so much to be desired in the next book to kind of see how these characters keep on going. Because what I love is that in the next book, you tend to see, you know, how these characters from the first book keep on developing. You know, it, it really feels like you are a part of this community. And so I truly believe that, you know, when we start the next book, which I think focuses on Easton, we will hopefully be able to see like more of how Lana has progressed after the end results of this book. Anyway, um, so I read four arcs. I read, okay, let's see which came out. Blaze Wrath, Hush, Mistletoe, Mr. Right, and Five Strangers. I'm just looking at my, <laughs> thank God I still have my little calendar so I can see. So Blaze Wrath Games, I gave four stars. Hush, I gave five stars. Mistletoe, Mr. Right, I gave five stars. And Five Strangers, I gave three stars. I think that feels pretty accurate for me. I definitely think, um, I have had a bit of 
flat coming back to me um, just on social media about Hush because it's written by Dylan Farrow and just a lot of people saying different things but I mean as a book I really do enjoy it and I'm, I'm definitely going to keep my eyes and ears you know open to see what happens but at this point in time I'm going to stick by my five star rating just because the book is a five star book and I mean I didn't really know who Dylan Farrow was up until I read this book so that's just my own thing but yes if you guys did enjoy this video please click that button down below if you want to see more of me please go to my channel and until next time thanks a bunch guys bye